Hi guys. I'm going to try and do a wired conversion of an electric car for Daniel Raymond. Now, this will be the third attempt. The first attempt was a very simple one. The second attempt failed simply because I found I had a radio controlled car and a transmitter that worked. I thought they were both faulty but uh, I managed to fix them during the video. So rather than cannibalise it for bits I've actually left that as a working car. So now we've got another little car that's come from the charity shop. It cost me a pound quite a while ago because it's got forwards backwards and it's got steering. For the controller I was thinking of modifying a radio controlled transmitter and then I found I got this laying in the box. Now all this is is the circuit board out of some sort of electronics that I've taken apart sometime in the past. But it's got a whole load of little push buttons on it. And all we need to go forwards, backwards and left and right is a button for forwards a button for backwards, a button for left, and a button for right. I can ignore all the others and I can just use these buttons simply for demonstration purposes. It would be much nicer if I had some sort of rocker switches that we could use, but this will do for now. I've got a battery pack here that actually takes six AA batteries but I've wired it so that I can split it so that I can have four and a half volt, volts coming one way and four and a half volts going the other way. So I'll be able to wire this up and control that. I'll do a little wiring diagram to show you what I've done. <laughs> it's going to look something like that but I'll draw it a bit bigger. Uh, for the wire to go from the controller, which will be like this, down to the car, I've got a car mouse, which doesn't work anymore. So I'm just going to pinch the wire off it, because that'll have um, four wires inside, and I need four wires to do the job. very fine wires but there's four of them and that should be good enough just to put the power down there. I expect if we get too carried away we could actually overheat the wires but I only need it to run for a few seconds so that will be good enough for me. So I'll switch the soldering iron on. On the back of here I'll actually cut through the circuit tracks so that we're not interconnected to any of the other bits because we don't need any of the other bits. So I'll just be using the switches as they are. Just to show you what I mean, literally just cut through the tracks so that they're no longer connected to anything. So if we want left, right, up, down, just cut through the tracks probably best if you cut a little bit of the track out so there's no chance of it making contact with anything. Not very easy to do this in front of the camera but this probably shows all that I need to do. That's all I've done. That would have disconnected any of the tracks from the actual switch. I've wired that up. I'll do a wiring diagram, as I say, because it'll be easier to follow a wiring diagram than try and figure out what I've been up to on here. So next, I'll take the car apart.
So we just need those wires for the forwards backwards and those wires for the steering. So I'll connect these up and see how we get on. I've just temporarily tagged the wires on there. I've put no um, insulation on there to stop them touching each other or anything. They're just hanging in the breeze. Just lift it up. Forwards, backwards. And right and left. Looks like I've got left and right backwards. So I'll just swap the wires over a little close up to show we've got a black and a red wire coming from the steering motor and those are going to that's a green and a sort of goldy colour wire on my USB lead cable that I'm using and then the forwards backwards motor is just two black wires one's going to a blue wire in that cable and the others go into a red wire in that cable. And I've just used little bits of hot glue to hold them in place and insulate them where I've soldered them together. And I put a bit of solder, a uh, bit of hot glue there to hold the cable in place. So now we'll put the lid back on and see if it works. I'm going to have to get my camcorder sunglasses to do this because I can't hold the camera and do the um, controls. I haven't got enough hands. You can see the forwards and backwards work, but I can't do, oh, I don't know, can I do that? Two buttons down at once. Yeah, just about. I'll get the get the glasses so I can watch what I'm doing. Okay, let's see what we can do with the camcorder glasses. Forwards. Let's try forwards and right. Yeah. Backwards and left. Yeah. Forwards and right. Backwards and right. Oh, no. Backwards and right. What's that button? Yep. Uh, forwards and left. Yep. Uh, backwards and right. No, nope, that's forwards. Backwards and right. Because the wire is a little bit stiff, you don't really. impression. Car's a little bit light for the strength of the wire. And that's why it's looking a little bit odd when we go in. I either need a heavier car or softer cable so it's more flexible. But it's working.
quick summary, what have we got? We've got an old radio controlled car that I didn't have a transmitter for. We've taken the receiver out of it and just connected some wires directly to the forwards backwards motor and the left right steering motor. And then I've used some buttons that are on this little circuit board that comes out of something or other. It doesn't really matter what it is. It just had some convenient push buttons on it. And a little battery pack that I use for various things. have full control. If I wanted to spend more time on it I would make this a little bit more user friendly. That's, that's good enough for demonstration purposes. I might do another video and convert a radio control transmitter to do this because it's the same principle you've got push buttons although they're hidden underneath little lever arms but you could do exactly the same thing with one of them. I'll draw up a diagram so you can see what I've done.